to uh, Romans chapter number 12, please. The book of Romans chapter number 12. Now, I want to bring you a message that uh, it, the Lord put on my heart today. I was listening to the radio, and uh, uh, somebody's on there giving a testimony or something and made a statement like this that stuck in my heart. And so I wrote these thoughts down, and I want to bring them to you tonight. Uh, Romans chapter number 12. Uh, he gives all kinds of instructions down through here. Uh, wait on your ministry, verse 7. Exhortation given, verse 8. Don't let your love be like a hypocrite, verse 9. And then look at verse number 10. Be kindly affection one another and honor preferring one another. That means put other people ahead of yourself like we studied Wednesday night. But look at verse number 11. And here's what I'll preach tonight. Not slothful in business. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I want to preach tonight on the subject being spiritually lazy. The word lazy is the exact opposite of zeal. A lazy person, uh, spiritually speaking. Now, uh, a sloth, if you, you know what a sloth is, you can look it up, that old animal, I think he lived out in South America or somewhere, and they got the three toes, and they just hang all day on a limb or something like that. And there's a picture in the Bible of a person who is lazy. And um, we're, we're living in a time, people lazy, physically. I don't think there's ever been a lazier generation of people than the time when I'm telling you people, they wouldn't hit a lick at a snake. Uh, if it was drawn back to bite them. I mean, I, there, there, there's people, like the old fellow said, he went out in the yard one day, and he sat down under a tree, and he said, Breath, I done drawed you for the last time. If you come in anymore, you're going to come in on your own. <laughs> you're too lazy to breathe. Uh, and, and, and there are people like that. I heard some of time, old mountain man, he's sitting out uh, in, in the living room, and uh, his, his wife said, uh, Honey, I think it's raining. Will you go out there and look? And he said, will not you just call the dog in and see if he's wet? <laughs> that's, that's our generation, you know. That's pretty lazy, ain't it? <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it, it's sad that, that it's that bad. It really is. Bible said, as a door turns on its hinges, so the slothful turns on his bed. You know, like that door over there in that office, it goes back and forth on that hinge. That's the way a lazy person does on their bed. They lay on that side a while. Turn over and lay on that side a while. Turn over and lay on that side a while. Turn over and lay on that side a while. They take a nap before they ever get up the first time. And uh, uh, they, they, they lay, and, and you know, back, forth, lay in there, cover up her head because the sun's shining in. Lay there a few more hours. Lay there a few more hours. Just lazy. Lazy. They say they've made, honest to goodness, they say they've made lazy reading glasses. Lazy reading glasses. That's right. Where they, they, they come up like this, and it's got a mirror or something that reflects this way. So you can lay down flat like this and hold a book right here. And, and your mirror and sees that. Too sorry to even sit up and, and read the book. I, they have made them. Honest goodness. Honest goodness, I read this. They say they have a motorized ice cream cone holder. Motorized ice cream cone holder. Where you put on a little thing and turn it on, and it spins around, and you just stick your tongue out. And you're looking at ice cream that's going around. Too sorry, too sorry to lick an ice cream cone. I, that's the day we're living in, buddy. I'm telling you, well, our generation, I, I, they've been looking for a job for five years and, and quit 50 of them because uh, too lazy to work. Too lazy to work. Just too lazy to do anything. Now, that, that, that spirit and attitude has carried over into spiritually. I'm going to talk about being spiritually lazy most of the time if somebody's fit, lazy physically they'll be lazy spiritually but not always not always i know some people that are pretty much on the ball i mean they they work hard they get up every day and go to work i mean they keep their yard mowed and their house decent and shoes out mud off of them and tire uh, you know keep the clothes halfway on decent and everything and they and they do pretty good but spiritually are very very, very, very lazy. And that's not good. 
That's not good, y'all. You can be very active physically and lazy spiritually. Some of you people here tonight, you, you've done real good. You do real good. You get up and you, you, you wash your hair. Uh, you fix up. You, do, you take a shower. You, you eat. You brush your teeth. You do whatever you need to do. But when it comes to spiritual things, you're getting lazy. And that's what I want to talk about here this evening. Notice how, have you ever noticed how that we can get everything else done except spiritual things and somehow or another we don't have time to get in the spirit? You ever notice that? Because this flesh gets lazy spiritually. I know, I, I can prove that at camp. We go in there and I, at camp, about the third day they won't lay in the bed. I go in there and say, God, boys! And they just lay there. I say, boys, get up! And they'll just cover up their head like that. And I say, boys, get up. I take my bullhorn in there and blow the horn and everything. They just lay there. And then I say, breakfast is only going to be out for 10 more minutes. And they'll go, good blanket over here. Walk out to get that breakfast. That's the only way you can get them up. If you had church first, they wouldn't get up. That means, here's what that means. That means when our flesh wants to do something, we'll find the energy and the time to do it, but spiritually, we're slack and lazy. You better be aware of being spiritually lazy. Spiritually lazy. I did a test on myself. I, I read my Bible. You know, of course, I, I read my Bible whether I feel like it or don't, whether I want to or not. I do it, practice it, and have for 50 years. And I read my Bible all the time, every day. I, I finished it again this year. Hope you have too. And, but I've noticed something. I've, I've preached this, and one night I thought I'd try it. And here's what I've done. I was sitting in, my bi- in bed, reading the Bible, and I was just like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. And I, I was just dropping off like that. I'm telling you, it's the truth. It's the honest truth. I'm preaching. I ain't going to stand up here and lie to you. I, and I kept drawing off, and I thought, I'm going to try and see what I preach is right. So I closed my Bible and picked my phone up and went through it, and I looked through it 20 minutes without even batting an eye. It's a miracle. How can that be? And I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. And I thought, oh, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at that. It caught my interest. Lord, it's quieter than turkey farmyard on Thanksgiving Day in here. <laughs> it's, isn't it amazing how that something that the flesh likes, you can perk up for that, can't you? Hey, you stay up half a night and watch a movie, but you take, well, that's what, pray 15 minutes. You just get sleep. Our flesh, mine does too, I ain't fussing at you. I'm trying to encourage you to say, beware of being spiritually lazy. Some of y'all got started in January. Glory to God, you was going to have it all read by February the 1st. I mean, you saw you set the woods on fire, reading the Bible, doing this, doing that. You was going to get in the bus ministry. You was going to get in this. You was going to pray. You was going to do that. And then little by little, you start getting lazier and lazier and lazier and lazier. Here's, a, here's an experiment anybody in here can do. Tell your kids, you got to stay on work Saturday morning, and we're going to clean the house up. And uh, it's amazing how tired they are. Oh, how tired. Oh, I've been to school all week. Can't I just lay in the bed this morning? But if it's saying, hey, we're going to Hickory and we're going to the mall and up the sun, they're up, jumping up, cutting, combing that hair, uh, getting ready because the flesh wants to do it. Now, you're going to have to battle this in your Christian life. And the only way, the only way you're ever going to be a success for God in your Christian life is make yourself do a bunch of stuff that you really don't want to do on a regular basis. If all you do is just what you feel like doing, you ain't going to amount to nothing. You won't keep a job. You won't uh, make a good living. You won't have a decent car to drive or nothing. Because if you don't want to go to work, you just don't. If you don't want to work, you just don't. No, you have to learn how to consistently be at work, work a job, pay your bills consistently. I mean over, and I'm not talking about a, a, a week or two. I'm talking about year after year after year after year. Success, here's what success is. It's it's five percent inspiration and ninety five percent perspiration. It's just hard work. 
That's what success is. And so uh, I'm talking about if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're if you're a deacon, if you're a singer, if you're a, a bus worker, if you're a, a just a soul winner, whatever you want to be, you get lazy at home. When a man gets lazy at home, weeds take over. Uh, the Bible talks about this. Weeds grow up in the front yard. I mean, you know, you don't go bus sprouts sometimes. You know, you're in a redneck place, man. Uh, when you go in and, and the grass is out, you move the grass, and there's an old car uh, underneath there. You know, a squirrel tail tied onto the uh, antenna. You know, and all that kind of. And you look in there and listen. We, I've been, we've been to seen houses on the bus route where there's a dead cat laid in the in the right steps for two weeks. Two weeks. You know, you can't pick up a, you can't take a shovel or a glove or something. And, and a sail cat, you know, sail cat, he, it's been run over so many times, you just sail it off down the woods. And, and they, and it's right out there in the woods, right there in the yard. And uh, that's pretty sorry. That's pretty sorry. And uh, I'm telling you people, it's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a very, very sad time of being just plain old lazy. Amen. You now you put that phone down a little while and make yourself pray. And walk. You got to sleep. You just walk back and forth through the house. And and plead about it. Listen, you, know, you want your bus kids, your bus workers, you want them to get something from God? i tell you what to do. Lay your phone down uh, on Friday or Saturday night and just walk the halls of your house saying, Oh, God. Oh, God. What I do, that's what I do. I'm in my closet and I'll stand up. I'll run when I'm running. I pray. Oh God, oh God, please, Lord, help me. God, please, Lord, help me. God, please, help me. Lord, please. The whole time I'm running, I pray like that. And I think, I think all kinds of deep thoughts while I'm running, so I don't be wasting time. When I'm driving down the road, I'm praying. I was praying on the way down here tonight. Listen, we're in a fight, y'all. We are in a battle for our soul. We are in a battle for our kids and for the very soul of our nation tonight. We can't get lazy. We can't get slack. You can't be a spiritual sloth. You can't be just a lazy Christian. We've got to get back up and fight and fight and fight and get the job done that God gives us to do. Now, quickly here this evening, I want to say uh, three things that makes us lazy. Number one, here's what I think makes us get lazy spiritually. Number one, we forget where we were when the Lord found us. We take it for granted. We take it for granted so much. How God's blessings, God's forgiveness, God's promises. We'll get up on the morning, Lord, thank you for saving me. No anything about being saved. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. No anything about blessing. Sometimes we need to jerk up on it and say, hey, the Lord's been good to me. Where was you when he found you? Some of you were out there on a bar stool, brother, and uh, drinking your problems away, and you were out there having no hope, no kind of in, 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 in joy on the inside, no kind of life at all, and the Lord Jesus come through by the Holy Ghost and reached down and touched you and saved you and put you in church, but he don't ever forget where the Lord found you. Some of you were out there maybe in a crack house somewhere or on drugs and you were hooked and you had nothing, didn't have a car, didn't have a place to live, uh, didn't have anything, and somebody was kind enough to come by and tell you the greatest story ever told, and you believed on the Lord, and God delivered you out of drugs, and God delivered you out of some kind of wicked mess or some uh, relationship you was in, and set your feet on solid ground, and put you in the church and gave you some, listen, you get lazy when you forget where the Lord brought you from. I was thinking the other day, and I told Kelly a little bit of it. I, I was, uh, uh, before I got saved, I sometimes I try to remember, and I was young, I was mean, only 18, and I try to go back and remember how I felt before I got saved. And I was, uh, I remember before I got saved, I did something. All I did was play basketball, really, and ride around up our Nebo in a little, little convertible uh, MG, and I had a motorcycle too. I rode that motorcycle one day, rode that MG the next day. And I rode around, I rode around, and I remember I was going down the road of their Nebo down what we call Fairview Road down below that church down through there. And I had the radio on, and it was, it was raining. And Rod Stewart had just come out with that song, uh, Maggie May. Remember that old song, May? Oh, May, I can't. Oh, you, you made a first class fool out of me. But I was blind as a fool can be. You know, y'all don't, some of Past your time, but I mean, it's very, very much on. And I remember, I remember thinking inside, I felt yuck. It was raining, and I'm driving down the road, listening to a 
queer thing. I, mean, I, I didn't think that then, but I, I, I remember thinking, good Lord, what am I doing? And I thought, gosh. My, and I remember thinking, I'm sort of sad. And I had whatever I wanted. I mean, I, couldn't, I was doing whatever I wanted to do. I could come and go when I please. There was no restrictions on me. And at that time, Mom didn't tell me to be, be home at a certain time or anything like that. But I remember feeling a, a emptiness. I remember feeling something empty inside. And when I played ball, you know, I graduated. And so that was over with. And uh, I always wanted to be a part of a team that never lost. I always did. And I thought, man, that'd be neat if you could belong to something that never lost. I didn't know there was such a thing. I know now there are. I can't lose now. We might look like we're losing, but brother, one need day that you're going to be on the other foot and we're going to come out on top. He always causes us to triumph in Christ. And I went and I got saved. Long story short, when I got saved, brother, everything changed. Everything changed. My sister, my oldest sister, she ran out of these girls at Nevo School. And I was young and they and they used to uh, pack me and pick at me and say, Oh, Danny. So he's such a cute little dear little brother. We just love him. And, everything. and I remember, and I they loved me. And when I got saved and I started preaching, they thought I had lost my mind. They, they, they didn't know what to think about. I started preaching. They said, did you hear about He got into some kind of religion or, or something. He, he went nuts. He, he said, oh, my. buddy, I left that crowd behind. I ain't kidding you. I, left, I got born again, y'all. I got born again. God done something for me. I know tell him, I said, things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. And I said, I seen something better, y'all. They something better. I found a better way. They said, you're crazy. I said, I'll see you later. I've been going down this road ever since. I ain't never regretted a mile. I travel for the Lord. I've never looked back and said, I wish I hadn't done it. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Glory to God, if I don't shut up, I'm going to shout tonight. I'm glad that I got saved. You know what will make you, you know what make you lazy? You forget where God brought you from. I'm glad I ain't going down the road listening to that idiot. Do you think I'm ugly? Yes, I sure do. Very much. Change it to the proper word. I, 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 listen, I'm telling you, I listen to Sly and Family Stone and, uh, I remember Sly, I don't know if y'all remember Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, Sly, boy, I, I didn't, and Santana, and all them guys, Jimi Hendrix, and they come out of that purple haze, and, you know, it, excuse me while I kiss the sky. And I thought, you people are crazy. My friend was sniffing airplane glue. The boys I run around with, they, they put airplane glue in a sandwich bag and was sniffing it. And I, mean, I said, y'all crazy. I wasn't even saved. And I had better sense than that. They some kids that all the time they're growing up, all they can think about is as soon as I get old enough, I'm going to take some pills or I'm going to smoke something that make me feel. Somehow or another, I thought, that ain't my scene, man. <laughs> I don't want, I want to do that. I don't want to sniff airplane glue. I mean, don't, that, don't something sound wrong about that? <laughs> I mean, a normal person would think, I'm not going to sniff airplane glue. Lord sniffing gas. But kerosene in the house bad enough. Uh, uh, not, not airplane glue. Crazy. And I got saved. And, and I've never got over where the Lord brought me from. See, some of y'all look at me and you think I've always been like this. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't always like this. I was a mess. Boy, I got saved. Lord, mercy. Uh, but the Lord done something for me. I tell you, that's what you got to do. You can't do that. Uh, you can't do that. Don't. Some of you are drinking y'all self to death. There's some of you sitting right here. If you hadn't got saved, you might have been dead drunk by now or already in hell. Well, you was drinking before you got saved and you quit. And God blessed you and God delivered you. I tell you, don't you want, yes, you think about that, you won't be spiritually lazy. Secondly, right quick, here's what, here's what will keep you from getting lazy. You got to remember that we're going to face the Lord one of these days. Even though we're saved, even though we're going to heaven, we're still going to give an account to God. For every one of us to give an account of himself at the judgment seat of Christ. How we spend our time, how we spend our days, how we spend our moments, how we spend our hours. We will give an account to God of how what we're doing with our time. Are you listening to me? You listen to me this evening? We're going to give an account to God someday. We're, we're going to give an account. It's on your record. Every, I would I would hate 
I would hate to get to heaven and the Lord pull up my sheet and say, all right, here's the month of December 2023. Uh, it's 30 days. You spent five hours a day on your phone. That's 130 hours in one month. You spent, let's see, uh, 35 minutes reading your Bible. 130 hours compared to 30 minutes. And I would hate for the Lord thing. Now, it's not going to send you to hell. It's got nothing to do with heaven or hell. But it'll, it'll make you spiritually lazy to forget you're going to give an account one day. You will give an account of every day that you live. Everything. Now, if you're forgiven, your sins are forgiven, you won't have to answer for them. But you, your works will be thrown into the fire of what sort they are. Gold, silver, uh, pressed stone, or wood, hay, and stubble. And whenever you just goofed off, it'll throw in the fire and be burned up. And whether you've done something for God, there'll be a reward given to it. That helps me many, many, many times to realize that I'm going to give an account. You Listen, instead of griping about the bus kids misbehaving, how about this? How about you fast a day for them this week? How about that? How about that? Reckon that'd work? Well, it'd be better than griping. Even if it don't happen, it's better than griping. Instead of fussing about uh, your husband or your wife not being good to you like you claim, why don't you fast one day? One day this week, say, I'm not going to eat all day long, and I'm going to beg God to get a hold of my wife or my husband or my kid or my, my mama or my dad or my brother or my sister or my family. Ask God to do that. Why not? Listen, we're going to give an account to God one day, people. I, that scares me. That scares me. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You say, you're not supposed to be scared and faced. Listen, I am. I am. You must be a mighty holy person. Uh, listen, I know I'm saved. But son, I dread that judgment seat of Christ. The hours we've wasted. The time we've let just slip through doing nothing. The, the days when we didn't do it, wasn't even a witness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, of all the fussing and arguing when we could have done something. Listen, the man who has a Bible and won't read it is worse than a man that don't even have one. There's people in the world who don't even have a Bible. That's sad. You know what's worse? People has got them won't read them. You're going to give an account. You'll give an account of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I heard a, a preacher friend of mine tell this story this week, and I'm going to relay it on you. I may not have it exactly like it happened. I was, I was working while I was listening, and I do that so I won't, I'm doing two things at once. And that's another thing. You've got to learn to do more than one thing at a time. Uh, if you have to make a phone call, let me give you a little information. If you have to make a phone call and you've got a lot to do, don't sit down and make that phone call. Do your work your housework, whatever, then when you're in the car, make the phone call. And that way you're not wasting that time. That you, you got you to learn how to space out your time like that. That's how I get so much done. The reason I get so much done, ask her. If you, I, I, you know, I get so much done is I do two or three things at one time. I get one thing started and do another. get one thing started and do another. Then one thing started and do another one. And at the end of the day, you got a whole lot done. I've got all kinds of things going on. Studies that y'all don't even know about that I'm working on in the back of my head my, that I want to preach here one of these days or teach on or study on my own. I got uh, goals that I've set just for myself that maybe I don't even tell you uh, like I did for my birthday a few weeks ago. All of that. And and you you got you to have some get up and go about you. You got to have some initiative. You, gotta, you can't just lay around and expect God just to bless everything you do and, and everything you touch turn to gold. Don't work like that. He said this, Brother Art Martin, great old soul in Ohio. So if I don't have this story right, anybody up there in Ohio, it's not on purpose. I, but I'm 95% right. He said, Brother Art is a great soul. If you've never listened to him on YouTube, you should. He's not well known. One of the most humble, faithful servants of God i ever known. And I listened to a message this week. He's an older gentleman. He's very calm. He don't run around and scream like I do. But he's just thorough and solid. And thorough and solid voice good. And he said, he said that he was uh, uh, had his set of golf clubs. He played golf. A lot of preachers play golf on their, their day off. And some some preachers they say it relieves stress and all that. I, you know, personally, I don't know. I don't understand why you're not going to hit it in a hole that big. That's gonna be luck. 
Uh, you, you might get close to it. You can't, I mean, from here to the interstate, that's, to me, that's a little, the odds are too slim uh, for that. But anyway, if you don't do it, that's fine. I'm not against it. But he played golf. And he said they had these very, very special golf clubs. He said them golf clubs was like, like very rare. There's only so many sets of them in the world. And somehow or another at the golf club, he met this guy who was very, very rich, had a lot of money, and he was like a some kind of almost a celebrity. And he saw them clubs. He said, uh, he said, preacher, I want to buy them golf clubs from you. And he said, well, these ain't for sale. He said, look, I know they're rare. They ain't but so many sets of them in the world. And, and I, I really, really like them. He said, I want to buy them. He said, they're not for sale. And he said, he'd asked him about them several times. And he said, one day he was sitting at home and he said, the Lord got started dealing with him about that. And the Lord said, hey, you know, you ain't never going to use them things. I mean, you know, they just keep them in a, in a little thing they put them in and, and all that. And you, you're, you're probably never going to use them. Why don't you just sell that man them golf clubs? My goodness. Uh, don't, be, don't be so greedy. And he said, all right, Lord, I'll do it. And he called the guy up and he said, look, if you, you still want them golf clubs, and that guy said, I sure do. And I'm willing to pay you a very, very good sum of money for them clubs. The guy, he's very well off. And they agreed. He said he paid him way more than what, you know, they are really worth because they were like a, like a, I don't know, some kind of rare treasure or something. And anyway, he sold them to him. And he said he took the money and did whatever he needed to with it, paid bills, whatever. And he said, uh, time went by and time went by. And one day he got a phone call. Said that guy was real sick. And his widow wanted him to pray for him. Because Art always tried to witness to it. And always tried to witness to it. And I'm not sure. Did you listen to that sermon? Did he say the guy got saved? I'm not sure if he said he got saved. But I believe he did. I'm not positive about that. But anyway, he died. He died. And uh, uh, the guy died. And about a week later, his wife called Brother Art up. And he said, uh, she said, we looked at his will. And he said he wanted you to have them golf clubs. And so he got his golf clubs back and got the witness of that guy and got the money. He said, he said, he paid me a lot of money for them. I don't feel good about it. She said, nope, he wanted you to have them. And I, and I got thinking about that and I thought, how many times does the Lord deal with us about stuff that we get greedy and we get selfish and we say, no, it's mine. It's all mine. <laughs> Remember that witch or whoever, who said that? Some witch in an old wheeler lot, it's mine. It's all mine. Now someone will jerk it right out of your hands one of these days too. Everything you give, you wind up getting back at the judgment. Everything you hold on to, you lose. That's hard for us to swallow, but that's the truth. You want to not be lazy? Realize you're going to face God one day. You'll face God with your prayer life. I mean, some of y'all, I remember some of y'all used to be on fire. You wouldn't think about going to a restaurant without leaving a track or 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 going going witnessing or something. I want to do it, brother. Dan. Let's go street preaching. Let's go. Let's do I remember some of y'all were like that. And now you're just you're going, you're lazy, you're slothful. You're slothful in business. The greatest business in the world. Finally, say this I'm through. You know how you can keep them being lazy? Number one, you remember where you were when Jesus found you. Number two, you realize you're going to give an account to him one day. And number three, what makes us get lazy is we forget there is still a hell. There is still a hell. There is still a hell. I wish there wasn't. I wish there wasn't no such place. But brother, this Bible declares there is a hell. The most shocking, horrible, sobering, scary, soul-shattering thought in all the world is that a man could be lifing and living this life one minute and die, and the next minute open up his eyes in torment to which he'll never get out. And never. Do we believe the Bible? If you believe the Bible, that's true. If you don't believe the Bible, I don't know what you're doing here. Why are you, why are you even sitting in here tonight? I think you do. If we believe the Bible, that's never been air-conditioned, it's never been changed, the Bible declares as a hell. It bothers me, some of these young old preachers, these TV preachers, they'll skirt around it. They'll say, don't die without God. You'll be separated from Him forever. Scared to say there's a hell? They'll say, uh, there's a, they're in Sheol. He lifted up his eyes being in torment. Are you scared to say hell? I said, well, that's a Greek word. How come they don't use a Greek word for heaven? See that? You see how the devil gets in them preachers? They don't want people to hear the word hell. 
I, I used to have a, a, a teacher at school, and he'd say, boy, he came in here like a bat out of Hades. You know, and people would say that, and, you know, we didn't know what Hades meant, but we knew what hell meant. People are scared to say hell. Let me ask you something. Does this book teach there's a hell? Yes, it does. If we don't believe it, then we ain't got no business claiming we're Bible-believing Christians. If we do believe it, we're backslid if we don't tell somebody about it. Ain't no, you ain't no straddling the fence. Get on or get off, brother. You either believe it or you don't believe it. You know what preachers are doing? They're letting people think they believe it, and they really don't believe it, and make a good living off of people. That's a crook, man. You'd be better off to sell meth than to, than to trick people into thinking you believe the Bible and don't even tell them there's a hell. If there's no hell, we don't have nothing to preach about. Funny how that heaven's real, but hell's symbolic. Amen. That's what they say. Listen, brother. A man can be laughing, walking, prospering, driving down that interstate out there tonight, headed to Raleigh for a, a while, a week of partying and sin, and never get there and wake up in hell before he gets down the road tonight in the next world. They passed God this, in this life, and he passed it by them the next. Remember when, the, when you first got on fire? Remember when you cared about everybody that you walked by? You just wondered whether they saved or not? You remember when you dreamed about soul winning? Listen, I've been, I used to go street preaching by myself. And I, I don't know many preachers I've done. I know a few. There's been several times I preached over at Kmart one time by myself. It's 35 years ago. And I felt like the Lord when I took my old van and I stood up there at Christmas time or something and I held my Bible up and I said, people, there's a hell. I've warned people. People laughed at me. They think I was the craziest person I've ever. You know, when the Lord looks down on that, He looks at it different than the way people see that. People see you as some crazy fanatic. God looked at it. That's what Jesus did. Do you know Jesus was a street preacher? And every preacher in the Bible was a street preacher? Every one of them. There were none, none of them New Testament apostles that we know of had a church that they actually pastored. Maybe one in their house or something like that. They didn't have a church building like this. They preached out in the open air, in the markets, in the streets, in the, on the corners, and, and everywhere. They preached out there. Listen, that'll, that'll help you. I remember I, I, I told the poor one time I preached. One time I preached out on the street. And I was sick as a dog. And I felt like the Lord wanted me to preach. And while I was preaching, I felt good. And I thought, the Lord's healed me. <laughs> I said, it's a miracle. And as soon as I got through preaching, boom, the flu hit me. I'm like, Sometimes that's the way it happened. One time I preached the street in Marion. Years ago, I'll tell you this, I'm through. Years and years and years ago. And we used to go preaching up there every Saturday. It'd be 10 or 15 preachers preaching Marion every Saturday. And there'd be crowds of people gather around. Amen. People bring guitars, we'd sing, and everything. And I remember preacher come to take turns, five minutes each. Can't last a long time out there, you know, hollering that air like that. We went preaching one time. It was eighteen degrees, and man, you could uh, felt like your words were slurred, like it was coming out in slow motion or something. And uh, uh, I remember I went up there one time, and it was in the middle of the summer. And back then, all the big buildings didn't have air conditioning. And the Marion Courthouse, one set up there right now, got these big old windows about tall from almost, good enough, they're about from here to there, probably 10 foot windows. And all them windows open. And I was down on the street preaching. And I said, the Bible says Jesus is coming back one of these days. There was people riding by. You know, I catch, you know, some of them would wave, some of them would do other things. And to, to let me know they was listening. And I, and I remember thinking, I remember thinking the devil said, you crazy fool. Ain't nobody even stopping. Them. People driving down the road. What kind of nut are you? And I preached hard as I could and I left. And about a week later, I run this boy and he said, Danny. He said, what did that cop say to you the other day? I said, what cop? He said, didn't that cop come down and make you quit preaching? I said, no, ain't no cop said nothing to me preaching. And they was having a murder trial in Marion. Truth, true story. Uh, some guy killed somebody or something. They was having a trial and the windows open. And they said they could hear every word I was saying down there in that whole courtroom. And the judge stopped and said, somebody go down and tell that guy to be quiet. Now, I didn't know none of this. And the cop came out and told me. And, man, he told me that. I said, glory to God, I got to preach to the murderer before they sent him off. 
And, and I don't know, you listen, man, that's, that lit a fire in my soul, brother. His word won't return void. You know, people laugh at street preachers. They laugh at, oh, you stupid people. Like, buddy, the Lord don't laugh at that. You better be careful making fun of somebody out trying to preach the word of God. I, would, I wouldn't say nothing to them. I've heard people say, he knows that ain't doing no good out there screaming at cars going by. I ain't saying nothing to it. The Lord might have him out there doing that. You know what will make you keep getting lazy? You remember there's a hell. Everybody you work with or go to school with is going to heaven or hell. Every one of them. That will keep them getting lazy. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Miss Desi, don't you just come and play something softly, please? She's playing really softly. Maybe you say, Brother Danny, I'm I'm been a little lazy. I've been a little lazy spiritually. I don't want to be a sloth. And I'm going to get in that altar. And I'm going to ask the Lord to rekindle that fire, that zeal in my heart for the Lord. Play, sister. We're going to pray just a minute and we'll go. Amen. Others, 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 others. Come on. Let's get that's right, teenagers, young people coming. Mamas and daddies are coming. We all just crowd in this altar tonight and say, Lord, I don't want to be lazy. Good night. Lord, I want to do something for you. I want my life to count for the glory of God. I don't want to waste it for heaven's sake. I've wasted too many days. I've wasted too many hours. I don't want to waste what I got left. I want to make something count for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Oh, God, help us tonight. Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us not to be lazy. Lord, God, help us not to be lazy. Lord, we got plenty of energy to do what we want to. We got plenty of energy to go to a ball game or go to a, 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 a restaurant or go to sightseeing. Or a, we got plenty of energy and money to do that. But, Lord, when it comes to your work, we seem to be awful lazy. Please forgive us. Help us not to be slothful in business. Lord, help us to use everything we have for the glory of God. Lord, bless everybody here. I pray that you'd help us to use every avenue that we got. The, the internet, the, our, our, our jobs, our, our place where we live, uh, our church, our opportunities we have to be a witness for the glory of God. Help us tonight, we pray. We love you. God bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Help this light to go out of here tonight and shine to the ends of the earth till Jesus comes. Keep these doors open and the preaching going on here till Jesus comes. We'll thank you and praise you for it. God bless everybody here on the altar tonight. Give everybody that that we need. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Even if some still praying tonight, we're not in no hurry. Take your time. Take your time. She's playing tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Future soul winners right there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord does? He looks down at kids and He cares about kids. You, you keep going after kids, the Lord will bless you. Amen. The Lord will bless a church that cares about poor people and kids. People that's less fortunate. Amen. And we got some sitting right there. I, mean, I wish you could hear the stories. We can't let you. Uh, yeah, I wish you could hear the stories. What was here this morning? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, sad. Sad. I'm telling you, I can't even, I because of the internet and everything, I can't even say what some of the kids here this morning was involved in. Hard to believe. Sad at such a young age. And it's our job. Our job to get them. And we're going to be bringing them in on the 17th. Two weeks from Sunday morning. From this morning. That you don't want to miss that Sunday morning. I'm telling you. You don't want to miss that. Two weeks from this morning. 17th. Sunday morning. You're going to see the bus ministry. And then Sunday night will be the play. They are be having practice this Saturday evening at 6. Right, Miss Tara? Uh, uh, don't forget that. Uh, that'll be... Uh, this Saturday at 6 p.m. 
Wednesday night, we're going to the steakhouse. Come hungry. You know, for those of you fast on Wednesday, that's a good time to load up, buddy. Get my $12 worth, glory to God. Amen. Uh, and that's tax, drink, salad, uh, all you can eat, chicken, fish, and dessert. Tax included for $12. It'd be like, it'd be like $8.99 for the buffet, then a drink, and then tax. That's what it'd be like almost. So don't forget that. That'll be Wednesday night. Come straight here. Then we're going straight on to the steakhouse. All righty. We're ready to go. All hearts clear. How many of y'all would like to hear the Barbie girls sing one before we leave? Yeah. Look at them over there. No. Hey. no. Sing your famous song. We're Barbie girls living in a Barbie world. That's why, that's why she called them that. They picked, when she picked them up, that's what they're singing. So they got the nickname. Uh, Barbie. But anyway, uh, they don't mind talking any other time. I'm just kidding. I appreciate these girls, all of them being here tonight. Gang of them over there. What about that? Amen. Miss Kim over there. This is where the rich people sit in our church. You know that, right? Over here in this section. They sit over there so they can watch the rest of y'all. Amen. All right. Am I forgetting something here? Uh, don't think I am. I usually don't write announcements down just once in a blue moon. I just figure there's enough pop in my head to keep you praying. Uh, we're ready. We're ready to go. Take your time getting out of here tonight. Be careful. Supposed to have some really nice weather in the next few days. Get some work done. Uh, just keep the Lord first. Do right and he'll bless you for it. Okay? Amen. All righty. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Eric Potter if he'll dismiss us in prayer. Everybody fellowship. Be friendly before you go. Go ahead, Brother.